Got a lot of questions about how the boat's set up, how it's tweaked, what's still standard in it, and how it lays out. So we're gonna go through and talk about what's tweaked, what's standard, and how it lays out. Tracker Pro Team, 175, 75 horsepower, two-stroke Merc on the back, 2004. So let's get this thing started. <laughs> So my favorite part about the boat is actually something that I put in and that's the electronics. As you guys know, I've been on a kick fishing offshore. I have kind of my golden child right here. This is a Lorentz HDS 12. It's the Gen 2 Touch. Um, I also have what I originally started fishing offshore as well as just my GPS mapping unit, which is my Elite 5 DSi. Um, obviously it's gotten a little overworked by a giant swim bait smashing it but um those are units that i put in i have them both mounted on ram mounts it gives me the ability to flip them around so i can see what they're reading from the front of the boat as well as just the change angles and that when you get some kind of sun glare and that um the other little option that i've put in in the cockpit seat here is if you can see down here there's a little little mounting bracket that has a wire kind of flexible arm to it and basically that's for my tablet um, if you guys have watched some of the earlier videos I found some very cool um, mapping images I guess they're in PDF as well as JPEG form and um, I download them onto my tablet and I have this mapping that I can kind of cross-reference against my Navionics and um, this kind of puts the tablet under the cockpit or under the console so it's somewhat protected by the sun so I can see it as well as you know in Florida we get crappy weather a lot it rains a lot especially during the summer it protects it from some of those elements so that's kind of my cockpit right here um, there's no hot foot on here or anything like that. It's pretty streamlined, pretty simple. Um, the only other kind of cool tweak that I have is I have mounted a little GoPro sticker mount so I can always stick a camera up there. And from time to time, I'll go ahead and put a clamp mount to, um, to put a camera up there in order to show, you know, maybe talk about the day or do a recap. So let's keep it moving. I'm all about big decks and simplification. One of the very first mods that I did on this boat, and I gotta send credit to a good friend of mine from North Central Florida, is I extended the deck. Um, extending the deck, a lot of guys will do it with two by fours and plywood. You know, he had an awesome idea where we actually built a PVC frame um, and used pipe straps and then strapped down a piece of plywood with some marine gray carpet on it. It's extended the deck, which I kind of enjoy. I tend to dance around and have some balance issues from time to time on the deck. So it's nice to have that extension. It also gives me some storage up under there. Um, on some of the newer trackers, you don't need to extend the deck because they've already done it for you. But keep in mind, if you are working with a boat with a shorter deck or you want to add some kind of little strip on there, using that PVC structure along with the plywood is a great, simple, lightweight, cheap way to do it. The other thing, keeping things simple, you know, I don't like having a bunch of seats in the boat. I don't fish with people that often. I like going out on my own. It's kind of my little time to do my thing. Um, and I also found that whenever I did have fish in the live well, whenever you lift that live well, you got to watch the corners because the fish can jump out. So what I did do is I took the two passenger seats out here. I did the same kind of approach where I used plywood and then the um, just the latch or the, the swinging mechanism that's on there and um, wrapped them in marine gray carpet. I still get all my storage, they still lift and close, and it's a lot easier to run back towards the boat. Um, it's a lot easier to kind of get back here and open up that live well in that. Um, it just makes the boat more fluid for me to use as an individual. Um, a little less comfortable when I bring somebody along, but uh, I got a little cushion and a little seat that Donnie Bath gave me, so uh, they get to ride on that thing, so it isn't so bad. But definitely simplification, extending the deck, um, those are some big features that I really wanted to make happen on the boat. Okay, one of the obvious ones, I, I don't think I need to emphasize it too much, is I did stick a power pole on here. You know, it's probably been one of the greatest investments in this boat, other than the electronics, I think, that, that I've made. Um, this is a Sportsman 2. Um, there was, it's all wireless, so I didn't have to run a wire to the front to do a remote or anything like that. Um, I didn't even put a bracket on it since this boat does not have a jack plate. I mounted it directly to the transom of the boat. And uh, why don't you come back here and take a look at how I did that. If we... 
So you can see here, I've mounted um, my hardware. This is on the top, but I've done something very like down on the inside. And once again, to note, I gotta send a shout out to Donnie Bass because he basically put this thing on for me. Um, I got some giant washers mounted straight to the transom. We actually found some some concrete, I think they're, I don't know what you'd even call them. They look like really thick steel washers. And I put those on the inside of the transom just to reinforce those washers and give it more of a distributed kind of weight for that pole to pull on. And um, it's been on there like three years, never seen any kind of cracking or shifting. So it's definitely held really solid. Just like on any other boat, it's been a little tricky squeezing the pump into there, but we did manage to get the pump in. Um, I'll talk a little bit about why there aren't three batteries in there in just a second. But you can see I have a little bit of space to kind of move and operate around and we got the pump situated right back in there. So we were just looking at the back of the boat and as you guys might have noticed if you're critical and analytical, there's only one big battery back there which is my cranking battery. Um, I do have a 24 volt trolling motor and to get the bigger batteries, which you really need for fishing the grass down here in Florida, I wasn't able to fit two, you know, 12 boats in that back compartment area without getting real tight or going down to a smaller battery, which I wasn't ready to do. So one kind of downside of fishing in a tin boat is the space and the layout. However, what I've done is I've used this rod locker right here, and you can see I got two big Everstart 12 volt batteries, and these are my, my trolling motor batteries. And it actually made it very easy because I'm only running like, I don't know, four or five feet of six, six gauge wire. So I'm not getting any kind of loss of, of um, the voltage or of power of ampage um, by running in an extremely long length or running smaller wires. So it's real direct, real quick. Um, it also kind of gives me an opportunity, which is pretty sweet. I run a couple of my graphs off of running one of these batteries as well. Really easy to wire, really quick, short wiring. I'm not having to run everything back to that cranking battery back there. Um, and as a note too, like I said, I'm simple. I kind of jury rig stuff. Um, I don't have an onboard charger. Um, what I am using is these car chargers just like this. They're six amp car chargers. I get them from Walmart for like 40 bucks. I've had the boat. I think I want to say almost five years, four and a half years, and um, I've gone through two of them. You know, so they do hold up. I leave them out here, store the boat outside with a cover on it. They hold up and they've been pretty good to me. And it's always nice too, because I can pop them off of here and I can go ahead and charge that rear cranking battery as well. So that's the setup right there. I'm able to fit some lights in there too, but my rod locker is eaten up by my 24 volt setup for the trolling motor. So here we are at the front of the boat. Uh, one of the things I've done just lately, and it's been an awesome addition, is adding these rod strap cords. Uh, they're really cheap, got them from Tackle Warehouse for like seven bucks a piece. Uh, they're awesome for a couple reasons. It saves me an extra trip because I don't have to pack the, the rods in the truck, take them out of the truck and put them in the boat. I can just strap them down and drive. I drive 60 miles an hour, about an hour away to the lake, and um, I haven't had an issue with them. They just save time and hassle. Um, it's also nice because some of the poles and some of the, I guess, the extra things that I'm using to do some of my video shoots, I can strap those down with the rods and everything's pre-packed in the boat because it's all about efficiency and saving time when you're shooting video on the water. Moving up here, I have a 70 pound, 24 volt Maxim, Minn Kota Maxim. This is one of the best decisions I made on this boat and it's something that I really should have done earlier. I had a 70 pound edge on there for the first few years I owned the boat. Solid motor, the problem is, is the bracket just doesn't handle the 70 pounds of thrust that you're getting um, from the motor. And it leads to a lot of jostling and it led to me nearly falling out of the boat like a hundred times. Thankfully I didn't. But um, this was something that literally it's night and day difference between the maximum and the edge even though you're getting the same thrust power the strength of that bracket and the sort of that that spring that's set up in the in the bracket head it, it just allows for so much control and so much more smoothness in usage which is hugely important especially as we fish offshore and the winds start kicking up in winter here and you're dealing with two to three foot you know waves and you know that motor is jostling around it's just only going to add to the difficulty and slow you down when you're out there got two units up here from an electronic standpoint my HDS 9 right here interestingly the HDS 9 isn't hooked to any transducer I have it networked with my HDS 12 which is connected to my structure stand structure scan transducer in the back as well as my broadband transducer so this isn't really actually drawing from any transducer but the one it's networked with in the back with the HDS 12 
I use it centrally to see what's going on on my structure scan in the back of the boat, as well as the mapping network capability. I wanna be able to, when I find a brush pile up front here, drop a waypoint, I want it to show up on my back. If I do it on the back, I want it to show up on the front. So it's a real simple way to network, a little pricey way to network, but it's well worth it. You can see next to it, I have an Elite 5 DSi. That actually has a transducer at the head of the trolling motor. Um, that's where I'm gonna go and look for my brush piles and say that's where it is, drop my buoy, or when I'm trying to find a waypoint, that's gonna be kind of the, the sonar that I'm gonna use to get there, whereas the HDS9 is the, the mapping unit that I'm gonna use to get there. And one last thing to note too, if you can see right under here, I have my TH Marine Troll Tamer. Basically, that just allows my bracket to be nice and locked down. It doesn't allow the trolling motor to shake as I'm driving. And um, it, it also, in my opinion, adds life to the trolling motor because that bracket starts jostling and starts jerking around, especially when you're running a lot of big waves. Um, it starts busting up those screws and those nuts as well as the springs. And it just shortens the life of the trolling motor. So if you can keep it stable and locked down when you're riding around the lake, you're going to be better off. So let's take a look outside the boat. We're gonna move on to the transducers and take a look at how they're mounted. So I quickly wanna hit on what I did with my transducer that's on my trolling motor head before we head back to the back of the boat and look at the, the three transducers I got back there. Um, this is my down scan or my DSI transducer. Um, it is mounted literally flush against the head of the trolling motor. One thing that you often run into is this joker skates a little bit when they're mounted flush. Um, and, and it's annoying because you'll, you'll get kind of a crappy signal or you'll get some weird feedback as it shoots to the side a little and you just don't want it moving around. You don't want the wire jostling like that. So once again, jury rig extraordinaire. Um, I had some, some rubber sheathing and I just cut a strip of that and put it under there and then clamped it down. This joker doesn't go anywhere. Another thing too is it provides somewhat of an insulation between the trolling motor head as well as the transducer. You will sometimes, and I don't know if it's a frequency thing with how fast the trolling motor is spinning or what it is, but you can get interference when you have um, when you have that transducer directly mounted flush. So it just gives it a little bit of a buffer so that I don't see any of that and I can get a clear shot of what's going on below me. So let's slide on back and uh, take a look at the transducers on the back of the boat. So right here I have my down scan transducer which is connected to my Elite 5 DSi as well as my broadband transducer. That's for your traditional sonar. Um, that's connected to my HDS-12. You can see they're mounted flush against the transom. Pretty traditional. Um, just use some silicone uh, as well as the mounting hardware that came with them. Um, I also have, you can see here, there's little wire grabs that are screwed into there. But what actually I think is kind of cool is how I mounted my structure scan transducer. You got to kind of sneak in and get tight to take a look. So come on down here and take a peek. You can see right down here, um, this is a piece of starboard. Um, it's a little tough to see, but basically that starboard is glued to the this understep of the boat. Um, it's not screwed in in any way, and it allowed me to not have to screw any holes into the bottom of the boat. I was okay with doing stuff into the transom, but a little bit skeptical with actually making holes in the bottom of the boat. Um, so this was a great option for my structure scan transducer. It also sets it a little forward. As you can see, this thing's like, I think it's like eight and a half inches long. It's pretty long and I wasn't really in the mood to have it sticking all the way out in the back, mounting it from the transom. I also get a great signal for a lot of being on pad. Um, granted, this is a smaller boat and I'm not going that fast, but one of the big complaints a lot of guys have is they can't run their transducer and they're not seeing anything off that structure scan transducer um, over like 10 to 15 miles an hour. I can see, not perfect, but I do get bounce back um, up to you know, 20, 25 miles an hour, maybe even a little bit more. So that's kind of one of the benefits of having it on that understep as well as having it down a little bit further. But that's a transducer setup. This was really easy to set up this way. Um, I've been in some nasty water, fishing in grass, and never had an issue with that glue or any kind of movement on that starboard. So thus far, it's a pretty sweet setup. So that wraps up the walkthrough of my Tracker Pro Team 175. 2004 with a 75 horsepower Mark II stroke on it. You know, it's been a solid boat. It's gotten me to a lot of places. It's gotten me on Lake Okeechobee. It's gotten me in Central Florida. 
it's been an, a great boat one of the best things about it probably is me not being super handy with stuff is it's a real easy boat to modify and to do tweaks on such as adding the graphs adding the trolling motor extending the deck you know these were simple things that i could do without too much experience working with boats working with electronics and it really allowed me to make the boat fishable um one of the big focuses for me is not you know i love to have like a super big super fast boat but in the end having a boat that has the the sort of template or the fishability template to it where it has the components that i want to do what i want um to me that's more important than having any kind of crazy big whatever if it's set up right it's fishable and that's the way this boat is set up and that's why you know in the end i gotta love it even though it is pretty small and it is a little tin boat but that's a walk through guys if you guys got any questions or you think i missed something or if you want to know a little bit more about some of the tweaks that you saw hit me up message facebook whatever and uh let me know all right guys tight lines